Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today we are gonna be going through a really fun behind the scenes of creating a flying food photo. So you've probably seen these kinds of photos around and maybe you've wondered how to create them. So today I'm gonna to take you behind the scenes on this one. So when it comes to creating flying food photos, before we jump into the actual shoot, there's a few things that are really useful to bear in mind. So the first one is planning. So the planning is really a key part of a flying food photo because even though they look random and they look kind of really just like everything's been thrown and captured, that's not really how they work. What we're gonna do is be capturing each element piece by piece and then putting them together using Photoshop composites later. So we really wanna have a good idea of what we want in each of those layers before we start shooting. This can be just as simple as making a quick sketch of your image before you start. And if you want, I've got some free composition planning kits, which you can download using the link up here or the link in the description. Those are gonna help you be able to plan out your composition in a way that uses composition techniques, but also just gives you a little guide. Okay, the next part is lighting. So for these shoots, we're going to be using flash. I've got my flash set up in my strip softbox here. We're going to be shooting a glass. You probably can't see it right now, but you'll see it in a bit. And I really want the light just falling on that glass. So I've cracked out the strip softbox and I've got two speed lights loaded in the back so that I can use a lower flash power to get a faster exposure time, but also still get the brightness that I need. I do wanna create a bit of a splash shot as one of the elements in my photo. It's probably gonna be the last thing that I create because I don't wanna create all that mess at the beginning. So using a low flash power allows me to get that really short exposure time. In terms of placement for the actual elements, it may look like they're gonna be thrown, but I'm actually gonna be using cocktail sticks to move the little pieces around the scene and take a lot of different shots. There are a few different ways you could do this. You could create some kind of rig system and use little thin suspension wires and kind of suspend everything so you can take one shot. I'm just gonna be doing it piece by piece and layering it in Photoshop later because frankly, it's just a bit easier, but either way works totally fine. You can of course also throw things randomly and capture shots, that is a perfectly fine way to do this. It is just a little bit more difficult to kind of guarantee that you're gonna get every layer that you need. Okay, so if you wanna read more details about sort of the technicalities behind this, I've got a full blog post linked down below, but for today's video, let's jump right into the shoot. So I've gone ahead and set up the glass here and I've actually put a couple of little bits of white tack on the bottom because I don't want anything moving around once I start dropping things in to create my splash shot at the end. Dropping ice in can tend to sort of mess up the glass position a bit and because we're gonna be compositing every layer on top of each other, I really wanna make sure that everything is in the same place. So in terms of settings, I, as I said earlier, I've got the strip soft box here, which is just stopping too much light spill going on the back and then I've done a few lighting tests already. As you can see here I'm using the grid to position the glass right in the middle and then I've done a few lighting tests here and we've got our shutter speed at 1 250th of a second. That's just cutting out all the ambient light in the room so the little continuous light that I have that's not going to affect our photo. I've got my aperture set to f14 so that is quite narrow but I really want a longer depth of field because when we're going to have elements here and here and we're going to have a splash, I'm not necessarily going to be able to completely control exactly where every single thing is. So I want to make sure that everything is in focus. So in order to compensate for that, because I've got my flash on a relatively low power, I think it's on 132 power in order to get that fast exposure time, I have bumped my ISO up to 640, but I know for my camera, if I zoom in, I can't see any noticeable grain, so I'm not worried about loss of quality in that. So what we're gonna do, first things first, we're just gonna add the liquid to the glass. So for this shot, I am just gonna be using a grapefruit juice. I just want something sort of pinkish, but because we're gonna be splashing everything around, I'm not gonna be making a proper cocktail. I would if I was doing just a, a normal sort of still shot, but for this kind of thing, you definitely don't wanna be sort of splashing around too much expensive liquid. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that. I think, let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think that looks like enough because I still want a little bit of a gap between the top of the liquid and the sugar rim. So let's go ahead and take our base shot. So this is what we're gonna use to layer everything else on top of. 
And there we go. So I think I might just put the light up and across a little bit because the other side is in quite a lot of shadow. And I think it would be nice if it was a little bit more illuminated. So I'm gonna kind of bring the light on top a little bit like that. So it's almost kind of like a side top light. Take another one and see how that looks. Yep, that's better. I'm just gonna move the whole thing forward a little bit. Just to make sure that that front of that drink is gonna get illuminated properly. Okay, great. Now we've got our base shot. This is what we can always come back to to comp in that liquid, the sugar rim, any other bits that might get a little bit messy through this process. So I have got a few cocktail sticks here and I'm just gonna start with the larger elements and then build in the smaller ones. And what I wanna do is always take more shots than I think I'm gonna need because the chances are you're gonna to wanna to pick and choose afterwards. And the most tricky part, getting it in without damaging it too much. There we go. So now I have a lime popsicle. <laughs> so all I'm gonna do is really look at my live view screen as I move things around and just take a bunch of shots. I'm actually gonna move my trackpad down here now. So it's a bit easier for me to see what I'm doing. So now I want everything to kind of look like it's exploding outwards. And then I'm gonna have a splash as well, which should kind of comp in with that. Do some at the back, do some at the sides. Want some cropped off to the side as well. And then I'm gonna go around the other side just to help me get that position from the other side as well. So I'll just bring my track pad here. I'm gonna try and take some of the other orientation as well. Do some higher up just in case we might want. Because we can always move the layers around as well. So let's have an initial look at that. And then I think what I'll do is exactly the same thing again with a different piece of lime so that we have some choices and it's not super clear that it's the same piece because it won't look like the same piece when it's in different parts and different orientations. But we might want to do a couple of different ones anyway. So let's have a look at the shots we've got so far. So if we come up here and see we've got lots of nice pieces. It's nice to have a few out of focus and a few more in focus as well. It gives us lots of choices because we might wanna have some perspective by not having every piece in focus. So let's do that again with a different piece of lime. I think I'm gonna take a smaller piece this time, maybe this little baby piece. And then I'm gonna try and do a few more shots to the front as well and try and get some things a little bit more out of focus at the front. get some close to the liquid as well. We have some choices. There we go. Okay, so let's just have another little check of those ones. Okay, nice. So let's move on to the next ingredient. And this is gonna be kind of the same thing over and over and over until you've done this with all of the different elements that you want. And then we're gonna finish with our splash. So probably gonna speed this up so you don't have to watch me doing the same thing over and over again, but just keep going until you've got every shot you want. Okay, so that is everything that I wanted to do with the elements. So I've now got loads of layers to choose from. And as I go through the selection process, I can pick out the ones that I actually wanna use and I can even move them around a bit afterwards. So now we're gonna go ahead and do our splash shot. Now I do have a whole video about how to capture splash shots with flash. So if you wanna watch that, then do just click up here. So I'm not gonna explain the entire process, but basically as an outline, what I'm gonna do is put my camera into burst mode and then just take a bunch of shots, dropping the ice over and over again until I get a splash that I'm happy with. So the reason that I did this last is so that we didn't create all that mess in the first place and we've got a nice clean base shot. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab a piece of my acrylic ice and get splashing. Oh, that's a that's actually a good one. Like that never happens. Can we just appreciate how that that never happens? But that might actually be the one. I mean, I don't even know if I should take anymore. 
I don't, okay, I'm gonna take some more, but seriously, that never happens. I'm impressed. All right, let's do it a few more times. Maybe these glasses are just really good for splashing. Or maybe it was just beginner's luck, I don't know. Let's try a few more and see what happens. Well, that's quite a cute little one. That's a nice big one. Now, as you can see, just as I continue to do this, can you see how the sugar rim is getting really gross and like just not cute now? That's why we take that base shot. And also the, the base is like disgusting. <laughs> so let's keep, let's just take a couple more. Now, the droplets are also cool. So even if we end up going with that very first splash shot, we've now got all of these little droplets, which is very cool. But do you know what? I really do think either this one, I just think that that one is perfect. So I think we're probably just gonna go with that. Let's not overcomplicate it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up and then I'll be back to show you the compositing process. Okay, so I've gone ahead and picked out all this select. So I've chosen which layers I wanna process and try. I still may not end up using all of them, but at least I have a starting point. So the first thing that I did was import them all into a collection in Lightroom and do the bulk of my color edit. So you can see I've already gone through and applied all of the changes to the files and then I've exported them all as TIFFs. So what we can do now is go ahead and open Photoshop. Okay, so once we've opened Photoshop, we're gonna do file scripts, load files into stack, and this is gonna allow us to load all of those images together each as a layer. So let's just go find those. So I'm gonna go and open all of them, sort by name, hit okay, and let it do its thing and import those. Okay, so as you can see now, we've got each image loaded into its own layer. So I'm not gonna go through and show you in detail how to do this because I have another video all about creating composites in Photoshop, which I'll link up here. But what we're gonna do is basically create a layer mask for each layer and then just mask in the bit that we want. So let's go ahead and just do it for one so I can show you. So we're gonna to go to layer mask, hide all, and then I'm gonna select my brush tool and make sure that I have white selected so that I can paint in what I want. And then we're gonna start painting in that lime. So there we go and then what we're going to do is zoom right in Ooh, maybe not quite that far <laughs> and then we're going to make our brush completely hard and a lot smaller and i'm going to switch the color to black so that i can erase what i don't want so then i can take out all those little bits of cocktail stick that i don't want to see there we go so now all we have from that layer is the little piece of lime that we want so i'm going to go ahead and do this for all of the layers and then select the bits that i want and i'll see you back in a moment Okay, so that took a little while, but this is just a job of patience when you're masking in. It just pays to take a little bit of time and keep turning layers on and off and seeing if anything is interfering with anything else. But here we have our final shot. So I've gone ahead and grouped each ingredient into a group of layers. So it's just a bit quicker to show you. So we've got our base layer here, which you can see is that lovely splash shot we took. We didn't end up needing to do any masking on that layer because the splash just came out well the first time. So if you did need to do that, then I would just take that base shot and then comp in your splash. So next we have our chili layer. I ended up just choosing two pieces of chili and then we have our mint leaves layer and I just went for three and then we have our lion's layer. So 
Overall, I'm liking it. I'm just wondering about this piece of lime in the middle and whether I like it covering up that ice cube. So what I have done already for some of them, but I think I might do for a couple, I just need to find which layer. There we go, it's that one. So if we just select that and select our move tool, I just move it around a bit and see what it looks like at different points in the middle. I think that's better. There we go. So now it kind of looks like everything is sort of coming out of the glass, but we can still see that really nice ice cube with the splash shot. There we go. That's how I, a really simple way to create a flying food photo. It does take time, a bit of patience and a bit of practice, but it is a really fun thing to try. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you in the next one.